Hi, in this video we are going to review chapter 7 to 12 for the final exams and here's the problem for the final exam reviews. The first problem, um, they're asking to solve the system by two methods, eliminations or substitutions. If you look at this system of equation here, we can see that this may be a best way to yield the elimination methods because we can somehow cancel the the x or the y if they have the same value but opposite size. Now, the first equation you can see you have minus two x, but the second equation has four x. So somehow we can make the two x minus two x here to become minus four x, and I can. I can do that by multiplying both sides by 2. Because if I do that, 2 times minus 2 give me minus 4x, 2 times 3y give me 6y, and minus 15 times 2 give me minus 30. And I do keep the same second equation as uh, it was given. So minus y equal 15. Now we can see the x coordinates here they have the same value, the same amount but they have the opposite opposite size therefore if you add them together the x will be gone. So I go ahead and add the two equations together. Minus 4x plus 4x that become 0x. 6y plus minus y the same thing as 6y minus y which is 5y and minus 30 plus 15 that is minus 15 and now you just have the y terms which you can solve for y by dividing both sides by 5 we can solve for y equal what? minus 15 divided by 5 that is minus 3 now after you have one value for x or y we can use any of the two equations given in the beginning to solve for the other variables. In this case, I can just pick the second equation 4x minus y equal 15 to solve for x. We already solve for y to be minus 3, so I plug in minus 3 to y here. So 4x minus y now becomes minus 3 equal 15. And now minus minus becomes plus 3. 15 keep the 4x. You are trying to solve for x, therefore subtract 3 on both sides. So 4x, 15 minus 3, that gives me plus 12. And now I'm trying to solve for x, so I have to divide both sides by 4. Therefore my x should be 12 divided by 4 or 3. So the answer to this system equation is x equal 3 and y equal minus 3 and we can write that inside a bracket. 3 for x and y is minus 3. And that is the answer. The second question, it is asking for simplify the radical expression. Now, in order to simplify the radical, it's just like we combining the like term of the x or the y the radical, they must have the same radicand, the one inside here. They must be the same thing in order for you to add the coefficient or subtract them together. In this case, 18 and 72, they are not the same, so we cannot combine them together. However, we can somehow convert the 18 and 72 to be something in common. So let's take a look at 18. I know that 18 can be broken down into 9 times 2. 9 times 2 is 18. And the square root of 9 becomes 3. Therefore, 3 jump out to the front, that becomes 3. And I have the 2 left under the radical. For 72, I can somehow rewrite 72 into 36 times 2, because 36 times 2 is 72. Now the square root of 36 is 6 because 6 times 6 is 36. Therefore 36 jump out to the outside of the radical that's become 6 and I have still number 2 under the radical. 
Now I can move back to here and then combine them together. 18 is now 3 times radical 2. 12, carry that down here. 72 is 6 times radical 2. So we multiply by 6 radical 2. And now we can simplify this one more time. Minus 5 times 3 minus 15 outside of the radical. 12 times 6, that is 72. And then we still have radical 2. Now, they have the same radical and a radicand inside here. Therefore, we can just combine the like term if they have a like radical. So square root of 2, square root of 2, they are the same thing. We can just combine the coefficient minus 15 add to 72. That gives me 57. And we just keep the radical 2. When they add this, um, the same thing, like terms. So your answer should be 57 multiplied by the square root of 2. The third problem. We are trying to rationalize the denominator and then write a quotient in the lower term. Now, in order for you to rationalize the denominator, we must multiply by the, the conjugate of this denominator. Remember, if I have radical A plus radical B, now the conjugate of this one is just radical A minus the radical B. This is the conjugate. The conjugate of the denominator is just or of an expression. It's just that the plus sign is switching to the minus sign. Because multiplying by the conjugates that gives you the difference of the squares, which we can apply the rule to cancel out the square root or the radical. And that will take care of all the radical um, in the denominator. So in this case, the denominator has square root of 7 plus square root of 5. We must multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate. Remember, if you multiply something to the top, make sure we do the same thing to the bottom. So I multiply. Let's, let's multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate. The conjugate of square root of 7 plus square root of 5 is just the square root of 7 minus the square root of 5. The minus sign and the plus, they are changing right here. Make sure the conjugate, they have the opposite side in between the two radical. Now I multiply this to the bottom. Make sure I do the same thing to the top. Because if I multiply the same thing on the top and the bottom, if you divide them back uh, again, the top and the bottom, you just get 1. And multiplying by 1 is nothing. So you won't change anything to the original problem. Now. After we multiply by the conjugate, we can apply the difference of the square. Remember, a minus b multiplied by a plus b. The difference of the square give me a square minus b square. We have something plus something multiplied by something minus something. In this case, a is square root of seven, b is square root of five. Therefore. For the denominator, I can rewrite these two things, a plus b, a minus b, into a square minus b square. a square in this case is square root of 7 square minus b square or square root of 5 and square. On the top, we just do the, uh, the distribution to, um, to the binomial here. But let's just simplify the bottom first. So I keep the same thing on the top here. Now, if you square the square root, that will cancel out. So you just have 7 here. And the square root of the, 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 the square of the square root of 5, that just become 5. Let's take away all the radical of the square root. And we just carry the same thing on the top right here. Now simplify one more time. 7 minus 5, that's become 2. 
so make sure we write everything on the top now minus 4 divided by 2 is minus 2 on the top and we have this one right here as the answer and this is the simplify in the lower terms the next problem is asking to use the quadratic formula to solve the equation simplify any radicals now in order to use this quadratic formula make sure the quadratic equation must be in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero that means everything should be on the left side the right hand side should be zero therefore I, I need to plus five on both sides to make the right side to be zero so plus adding five on both sides I should get 3t squared minus 4t plus 5 equals 0. And now we can identify a, b, and c from the coefficient of the t terms right here. So a is the coefficient of the square terms, or a is 3, b is the coefficient of the, of the middle term, or minus 4, and c is just a constant, in this case, is 5. Now remember the, the square root, uh, the quadratic formula, t, in this, in this example we are using t instead of x, so I'm, I'm letting the variable x now just to be t. So it's minus b plus or minus. The square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now we just wrap all the coefficients a, b, c and plug them in this formula. So minus b, minus b is minus 4, so make sure we carry down all the minus side here. Plus or minus b square, which is minus 4, square, minus 4, times a times c, a in this case is 3, c in this case is 5, and divide by 2 times a, a now is 3. Now simplify this radical, the top minus and minus become plus 4, plus or minus. Now minus 4 squared that's become positive 16. 5 times 3 5 times 3 times 4 so 5 times 3 is 15. 15 times 4 is 60. So 16 minus 60 over 3 times 2 is 6. Now simplify another uh, step here so 16 minus 60 does give me minus 44 over 6. Remember, we cannot have a negative inside a square root. Therefore, in this case, we are getting the imaginary number. So I keep the 4. I can, I can take out the minus to the, uh, to the outside. And I can make the i, which is the imaginary units. And then I have the same 44 under the radical. And now I can simplify the 44. 44 can be written as what? What is a perfect square of the two numbers? I can think of 4 times 11. Because 4 times 11 is 44. But the square root of 4 is 2, right? So we have 2 and multiply by the square root of 11. So now I can rewrite here plus or minus um, 2 i and then square root 11 over 6. Now we can see 4, 2, 6, they all have a common factor of 2. So I can pull out a 2 from the top. So I have 2 here. I can take, I took away 2. Now I only have i and then right of 11 over 6. Now we can simplify this one. We divide by 2 on the top and at the bottom we have 3. Therefore I have 2 plus or minus. Don't forget the minus here. I radical of 11 over 3. And this should be the answer for this equation. Or we can just write two answers, plus and minus. The first one is 2 plus 11 square root 11 i divided by 3 the other one is 2 minus square root of 11 multiplied by i 
I just move the i to the back over 3 and this is the two answer of this quadratic um, equation using the quadratic formula let's move on to the next question solve the equation express the radicals in the simplest forms the hint is use the square root property so what is the square root property so imagine that I have a square equal b now in order to solve for a I must take the plus and the minus square root of b on the right hand side so this is the square root property so here we have something some quantity square equal to 25 so in order to solve for x here we must take away the square the powers of 2 on the left hand side and we can do that by just getting the plus and the minus the radical on the right hand side which is 25 now the, the radical or the square of 25 does become plus or minus 5 we have two different answers now in order to solve for x I must isolate x on the left hand side so I go ahead and minus 3 on both sides so 7x equal plus or minus 5 minus 3 so don't mess up with the plus and minus make sure you have minus 3 um, after plus or minus 5 and now to solve for 7 for x we just divide by 7 on both sides so we should get x equal plus or minus 5 minus 3 divided by 7 that means I have two different answers the first one I take the plus 1 which is 5 minus 3 divided by 7 the second answer I take the minus k minus 5 minus 3 divided by 7 5 minus 3 that is 2 2 over 7 the other one is minus 5 minus 3 that is minus 8 minus 8 divided by 7 and these are the two answers to this problem The next problem is solving the equation the square root of some expression equal to x plus 2. Now we want to find the, the solution to this equation that means we are trying to find the value of x that's when you plug in that value it will make the right hand side and the left hand side to be the same thing. Now in order to solve for this one we just don't want the square root on the left hand side and the only way that we can take away the square root is that we can square both sides because the square of the square root will cancel out so on the left hand side I have x square plus 3x plus 7 now on the right hand side we can expand this out using this formula a plus b square equal a square plus 2 times a times b plus b square. In this case a is x, b is 2 therefore a square is x square plus 2 times a times b plus b square with the 2 square. Now simplify this further I can get the left hand the right hand side x square 2 times 2 is 4 x 2 square is 4. Now it's time for us to combine the like term on both sides I know that this is x square x square I can subtract x square on both sides and luckily all the x square terms are gone so we don't have to solve for the quadratic uh, equation now I have 3x plus 7 equal 4x plus 4 we are trying to solve for x so we need to combine all the x to one side so let's subtract 3x on the left hand side and same thing to the right hand side because I can see 4x minus 3x is just 1x plus 4 equals 7. Now to solve for x, I subtract 4 on both sides. So now I get x equal 7 minus 4, which is 3. Now we must check the solution to any radical equation. The reason that we must check the answer at the end because when you square both sides, you may create an extraneous solution to the original problem and some of the solutions should not be there when you square both sides you're changing the original equation therefore you may make an extra solution that should not be the, the real solution to the equation 
Therefore, in solving any of the radical equations, we must check the answer. So x equal 3, let's check the answer. I use the same original problem. Square root of x square, now x is 3, so 3 square, plus 3 times 3, plus 7. Now that's equal to the right hand side, 3 plus 2. Let's see, x 3 squared is 9, 9 plus 7 is 9 plus 7 is 16, 16 plus 3 times 3 is 9, which is 25, and 3 plus 2 is 5. The square root of 25 is 5, so 5 equals 5, this is a true statement. Therefore, x equals 3 is the correct answer to this problem. The next problem asks to simplify the expression, the radical expression, assuming that all the variables represent non-negative real numbers. Because if you have a negative under the square root, that is not a real value. Now, to simplify this radical or the square root of an expression, we are trying to factor out the perfect square so that we can take that away from the radical or the square root. I can see that 54, 54 can be broken down into 9 times 6. 9 times 6 is 54, and I know that 9 is the perfect square, which is 3 times 3 is 9. And then for x to the 5th power, well, I can rewrite that as x to the, um, to the square, and then square. Because now we know that the index here is to the square root. So we just need to find a, a square under the radical so we can cancel 2 and 2 right here. I know that 2 times 2 is 4. So we are missing one more x to, be, to make that to be 5. So I multiply by another x. 2 times 2 is 4. And 4 multiplied by 1 right here, which is 5. Because that we have the same base, we add the exponents, so that's make that to be five. The reason I want to make that to become two times two because two and two here they cancel out each other, so I can take away the perfect square. The same thing with y. I know that I want to make y to have the perfect square too. So what power I can have? I can have here. I can get three times two, which is six, which is y to the sixth power, right? Now we can simplify that for the last step. The square root of 9 go outside to become 3. So under the square root I still have 6 because there's nothing I can do for 6. Now the square here, the square for the index and square for the power, they cancel out. That's why you can bring out x square to the outside. And then also the square here and the square here they cancel out, you can bring out y to the third power. And all you have left under the radical here is just the x term. So the final answer is 3x square y to the third power radical or square root of 6. Let me just rewrite here one more time. x square y3 and square root of 6x. This is the answer. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Question 8. Graph the parabola. Give the vertex, the axis of symmetry, the domain, and also the range. Now in this problem, um, we can see that we have some second degree polynomial or quadratic equation, which is the parabola. Now, in order to find the vertex, we know that the formula for the vertex, the x coordinate is what? Minus b over 2a. And for the y, it's just the function of f evaluate that as minus b over 2a. Now the first thing from this equation here is that I'm trying to identify what is a, what is b, in this case. So I know that a is a coefficient between the x square before the x square term or minus 2. b is the coefficient of the x term or a. So I can go down here and find minus b minus a over 2a, a is minus 2. 
and that's give me what? This is 2 times 2 is minus 4. Minus 8 divided by minus 4, that is 2. And then I can just find f of what do I get here, which is f of 2. So how do I find f of 2? Go back to the function f of x. When the function f of 2 for x, we have minus 2 times 2 squared plus 8 times 2 minus 5. And that should be, let's see, 2 squared, where right here is 4, 4 times 8 is minus 8. This is minus 8. 2 times 8 is 16 and minus 5. So 16 minus 8 is 5. It's, it's plus 8. Plus 8 minus 5, that is 3. Therefore, it should be 3 right here. So this is the vertex of the parabola. We also know that a is minus 2. It's less than 0 because a is less than 0. The parabola should be opened upside down. The acid of symmetry is just x equal to the, the, the x coordinate of, of the vertex or 2. This is the acid of symmetry. This is the vertex of the parabola. Okay, now we can plot the try to plot the parabola now. I know that when the vertex is at 2 and 3, so 2 for x, this is x, this is f of x, so 2 for x, and then 3 for y, 1, 2, 3. It's right here. And it should be opened upside down, so this is, should be the highest point. I know that the acid of symmetry is the one that goes to the vertex and divide the parabola into half and half side. Now, we need to find two more points, one on the left side of the acid of symmetry, one on the right side, so that we can connect the parabola together. So let's just make, an, make it easy, we can just find a point when x is 0. So when my x is 0, f of 0, I want to, I, I want to figure out what's the value when x is 0. So 0 for x, 0 for x, here we have minus 5. So minus 5 is right here when x is 0. So when my x is 0, my y is minus 5 right here. And I know that this is the, the acid of symmetry, so it's divide the parabola into half and half of symmetry. Therefore, minus 5 right here, we have two units to the acid of symmetry, therefore from here, we go another two more units, four, it should be also minus five because they are symmetrical points. And now we can connect the parabola. This line here go to here, and then it's upside down, so it also goes, go to the other point, and that should be a parabola. The domain of any parabola is all the x axis. So the domain should be going from negative infinity to positive infinity. Any value of x should be good. Any value of x should make the function to be defined. Now for the range, is how far you can go on the y-axis. Remember, we can go all the way from negative infinity up to the max points right here, which is from negative infinity up to 3 only, because 3 is the vertex right here. x for 2, y for 3. 3 is the max point we can reach up to, or make sure we include the point number 3, therefore you the bracket. This is the range for the parabola. This is the domain, the range, the acid symmetry, and the vertex, and this is how the parabola should look like. The next question asks you to find the value of x of this figure. We are given a right triangle. Remember, for any right triangle, we can apply the Pythagorean theorem. And this theorem is saying that the hypotenuse square, which is 17 square, is equal to the other two sides, the legs square, and adding them together, so x square, plus 15 square. And we can just solve for x easily. 17 square 
we can subtract minus 15 square on both sides because I'm trying to isolate the x square on the right hand side. So x square here equal to 17 square minus 15 square. And 17 square is how much is it? 17 square is 289. 15 square subtract 15 square and 15 square is what? 229. So 289 minus 225. That should give me 64 equal x square. And to solve for x, we can just take the plus and minus right of 64, which is plus or minus 8 because 8 times 8 is 64. However, when we talk about the side, the length of the uh, triangle, we do not consider the minus value. Okay, that doesn't make sense for the measurements of something to be a negative value. Therefore, in this case, it only makes sense to have only the plus value for x. So x equal a should be the value. The next question is Ralph the exponential function. So anytime that you are given the exponential function, we know that this is the exponential function because the variable x now is in the place of the exponent. And we can make the table of the x and the y value just to make it easy to find the point and we can plot that on the x y plane. So I have x, I have y, y is f of x. So let's just pick a few values, maybe minus 2 minus 3 half, minus 1, 0, and 1 half. Now when x is minus 2, minus 2 go to x. So minus 2 times 2 is minus 4. Minus 4 plus 3 is minus 1. 2 to the power of minus 1. 2 to the power of minus 1, that's equal to 1 over 2. So when your x is minus 2, your y should be 1 half. Minus 3 half for x, we can also plug in this x to here. So 2 times minus 3 over 2, that's give me minus 3. Minus 3 plus 3 is 0. So you have 2 to the 0. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. So when minus 3 half for x, you should get 1 for y. And do the same thing for the for, uh, the rest three number here. You should end up with two, eight, and sixteen for the y value. And now after we have all the answer, we can find the function, the graph of the function. So when my x is minus two, minus two is right here. I have my y to be one half. 1 is right here, so minus 1 half may be here. When my x is minus 1, which is right here, then my y should be 2. So 2 is right here. When my x is 0, then my y should be 8. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So let's make it here. And then so on. So 1 half. This is 1, this is 1 half is right here, and all the way 16 may be around here. And we can just connect the, the dot together to make that into the line. And the exponential function is approaching to the, the x axis on the left side. As you keep going on all the way to the left, you are approaching to 0 but never crossing to the x axis. And this much to go to this point here just to make it clear. Let me write this one. Okay, the function should be go to this point right here and up. Alright, so it should look like that. Because uh, I have a bad chopping, but it should look like this curve right here. Okay, let's move on to the next question. We are trying to solve this equation for x. Give an exact solution. Logarithmic functions. Um, this is the log logarithms. So the answers must either in base 10 or base e. And write your answer as a solution set. 
Now, in order to solve for the exponential equation, because all the variable nouns are in the exp exponent, so we cannot just solve for them as we normally did. So in, in order to solve for the exponent, we must somehow apply the log or make sure the right and the left hand side they have the same base. We can see that 25 on the right hand side is 5 to the second power. Let's write that here. Okay, the right hand side 25 is 5 to the second power. And we keep the left hand side. Now, they have the same base in order for the, the equation to be true. And when they are having the same base, phi, the, the only way that the two the two sides are equal is that when their exponents are the same thing. So that means we have the exponent 2x plus 1 equal to the exponent on the right hand side, which is 2. And from here, we can solve for x easily. This is a linear equation. Subtract 1 on both sides. 2 minus 1 is 1. Divide by 2 on both sides. I get x to be one half. So one half is the solution. And the next question we are trying to, to write the following as an exponential equation. Now ln ln is the log of base e. Right? So I can rewrite ln y as a log of base e y equal to. Now applying the the logarithms uh, definition for the log e to the power of 2 equal to y. So you have e to the power of 2 equal to y or y equal e to the square power and that should be the expo exponential equation. Okay, let's go to the next question number 13. So this problem asks to solve and then write your answer as a solution set. Now this is 4, base 4 to the power of the log, base 4 of 12 equal x. This means we are looking for the value of x. Now remember that's for the um, the log's properties. We, we have a special properties for the log. Base, okay let me write this one. Okay, the base b to the logs of base b of any x is it equal to x. This is a special property. When the base b and the base b here, they are the same thing, you can just cancel them out and the argument x here should be the final value. And why this is the case? Now imagine that you, you just left this whole expression here to be y. Okay. So now we end up with b y equal x, and that is equal to x. And the reason why, because we if we let y to be logs by b of, of x, and by the definition of the logs, b to the y power equal x. That is why b to the y power equal x here. That means we just cancel out all the base, and we should get the argument x as the final value. In this case, they have the same base 4 and 4. You can show out them. That's why your x should be 12. The next question is graph the log function and label any intercepts if they have one. Now, remember for the log function, the domain of that should be bigger than 0 and to the right of 0. We cannot have a 0 for x or something less than zero because if you take the power of two to the power of something any power of something must be bigger than zero we cannot get a zero for any exponent or a negative value now we can make some um some points x and f of x let's try maybe one two four so when x equal one logs by 2 of 1 plus 1 that should be 1 okay so when x is 1 I have f of 1 and that is equal to log by 2 of x sorry x now becomes 1 
Okay, we write this one. Okay, one and plus one. Now, logs by two of one. Any power, any logs of of the argument one should be zero, because two to the power of something equal one. Then the only power that make that to be one is zero. So the whole thing here is zero. Zero plus one. That why it's one right here. Now when x is two. We have f up two equal logs by two up two plus one. Again, the two base they cancel. That's why this whole thing become one. One plus one is two. And then four, we have f of four equal logs by two of four equal one. Now this expression here, two to the root power equal four, which is two, right? Two to the two power is four. So 2 plus 1 is 3. So if you plot this here, if you have 1 for x, then you have 1 for f of x, which is right here. If you have 2 for x, you, saw, you should also get 2 for y, which is f of x. If you have 3 for x, you should get 4 for f of x, which is right here. And we just connect them together. Oops, this is not the correct um, line. Let me reach out to here. Okay. One for one is here. Uh, let me write this one. One for one is here. Two for two is right here. Three for four is maybe right here. Then if we connect them together, we should end up with some curve like that here. Okay, this is this is not a good drawing. Let me reach us here. Let me reach us here. All right. One for. 1, 1, which is right here, 2, 2, which is right here, and then 3, 4 is 3. Yeah, this is not 3, this is 4. That's why I messed up over here. 4 for x, which is right here, and then 3 for y is right here. 4, 3. So the curve should look like this here, and then they are approaching to the vertical x axis. We know that we cannot go beyond the the left side zero or zero for x because that doesn't make sense for the domain of the log function. Right, this is not a correct one. So this is the correct function. Yeah. Okay, the next question. We are given um, three terms for the logs. We are trying to write them at a single logarithm. Now. We need to apply a few rules in this case. Writing the the combinations of the logs, uh, several logs into a single logarithm. That means you want to string them as simple as as much as possible. So now we can see the first term. There's a one four for the. Um, okay, let's review quickly a few basic rules. The first rule for the logs, the properties. Logs by B of A times C. Right? Now, if you have a log of the, the multiplication between A and C, you can write them as a, the same base B and using the addition for the individual log of A and C. So, log by B is of C. Now, if they have the division between A and C, that's become the subtraction of A and C with the same base B. Make sure they have the same B, base B here. So log by A subtract logs by B of C. Now the third rule is the power rule. If you have a logs by, by B, A to the power of C, you can bring the power of C to the funds of the term C logs by B of A. So any power can be um, brought down uh, brought down to the front uh, of the coefficient. So the first k 
we have one four as the coefficient. Now you want to write that as a single logarithm. That means you want to bring it back to the exponent. We bring it down to expand that. Now you want to string it together. You should bring it back to the exponent. Therefore, the first term I have log base b of r and one four jump back to the exponent. The, the same thing happened to the, the number 2 here is jump back to the exponent. This is base b to go back to s. And then also the 2 thirds go back to the exponent. Now we can see that they all have the same base b. So we can apply the properties for the addition or subtraction right here. We can see that this is the addition, this is the subtraction. So if you have an addition, that means the two arguments must be multiplied together when you string them, combine them together into a one single logarithm. So the logs, the same base b, and then now we multiply the two arguments right here together because they are addition. And this is the subtraction, therefore we divide them, and then whatever you have for the argument here, go to the denominator. And that should be the final answer for the single logarithm. The next question, we try to solve the equation for the x given the exact answer and four decimal places approximation. Now, before we can solve for any x, the best way to solve for any log function is that we must write them as a single logarithm because it's always easier to just have one single log to solve for x by using the definition of the logs convert them back to the exponential equation rather than having a lot of logs uh, adding subtracting together now we can see this is the subtraction between two arguments having the same base 3 subtractions we can combine them into the division between a and c or between these two so I can rewrite this as a log of base 3 and x plus 2 because this is subtraction so they should be the division and then keep the right hand side to be the same thing now we can see that the left hand side and the right hand side are equal they have the same log base 3 so in order for them to be equal the argument right here and here, they must be the same thing in order for them to be equal. Therefore, x plus 2 over x must be equal to 2 in order for the two sides to be the same or equal. And we can solve for that easily, multiplying by x on both sides. I have x plus 2 equal 2x. Subtracting x on both sides, I get x equal 2. Now you must also check your answer because you are you don't want to have something that is outside of the domain for the log function. And we are also dividing by the x right here. You don't want to divide by zero. Okay, so let's check the answer. So any any time you are solving for the log function, make sure to check the answer to make sure that the value is inside the domain for the log function. So check the answer. Go back to the original function logs of b3 x plus 2 x now is 2 2 plus 2 is 4 minus logs b3 of x which is 2 that that's equal to logs b3 of 2 now well we can add the two the logs b3 of 2 on both sides so we have 3 4 and the, I add this to the right hand side I have log by 3 of 2 plus log by 3 of 2. They have in the same base 3 and they are adding together. That means I can just multiply the two arguments together using the property number 1 right here. Now, 2 times 2 is 4. So that's equal to log base 3 of 4. And that is equal to this one right here. Therefore, the two things are equal. And that means x equal 2 is the answer for the log function. Okay, the next question, you are solving for this um, um, the word problem. If a 
varies directly at the square of B. Now find the value of A given when B is 2 and also this, this uh, existing info. So A varies directly at the square of B. This statement right here tells you that A equal K times B square. K is the proportional um, constant. A varies directly. That means K multiply at the square of B. That means B square. Now, in order for you to find the value of A when B is 2, we first need to figure out what is the value of K. We are given this data point right here. When A is equal to 4, my B should be 3. 3 square. Now you can solve for K. This is 4 equal 9, 9 3 square is 9. So 9K. So dividing both sides by 9, you can solve for K. 4 over 9. So K is 4 over 9, and therefore the equation should be A equal 4 over 9 B square. Now you are given the value of B, which is 2, and you are asked to find the value of A. So B now is 2 square. 2 squares 4. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 over 9 is the value of A. The next question is so solving the following inequality. Inequality is not equal. It's less than, less than or equal. Bigger than or bigger than or equal. And then write your answer in the interval notation. In this case, before we, we're solving this one, we know that we have the absolute value of some expression. So we must isolate that to one side. So subtract 7 on both sides. I have 3 minus 4x less than minus 4 minus 1 is minus 11. Now, the absolute value of something, some number, is always 0 or bigger than 0. We cannot have something that is negative because we want something to be less than minus 11. That means the absolute value of this expression here must be less than negative 11 or it should be some negative value less than negative 11. And taking the absolute value of something cannot be a negative value. Therefore, this has no solution. This equation has this inequality has no solution. Okay, let's try the next question. Graph the unions or the intersection as indicated here. Okay, so we are trying to graph this one. This is these are the two uh, linear equation. Now to, to graph for this one is the best way is to graph a linear equation is to write them as the uh, the y slope intercept form y equal mx plus b and then you can graph the y intercept and the slope okay let's try the first equation right here so i can solve for y so let's subtract 2x on both sides I have minus 2x plus 14. I I keep the sorry this should be the y right here. 7y. Right, subtract 2x on both sides. And then we solve for y, that means we divide by 7 on both sides. So y less than or equal to minus 2 over 7x. 14 divided by 7, that is 2. And then this guy here, I can solve for y by moving y to the right hand side. Uh, y plus 1. And then subtracting 1 on both sides. So y less than or equal to x minus 1. Or we just switch the order of the y. y less than or equal to x minus 1. So these are the two equations two inequalities. Um, we should graph them and then find the the unions or the intersection of, of the two um, 
the two lights right here. Okay, let me draw the light again. Let's clear this one. Make sure that should be a straight. Okay. Okay, we we are chopping this light first. Minus one is a y intercepts right here, minus one. And then the slope is one, which is one go up one, go to the right by one, plot another point. This is including equal side, so we are using the solid line. Now this line divide a plan into two area. This upper half, this lower half. Now this is the inequality. So how do I know that which region that I should say my uh, my my answer? So we are gonna p pick some test point. Let's pick zero zero just for easy. Zero zero to test for here. Zero for y. Zero for x. Now the, the, this state statement two minus one big down or equal to zero. Minus one cannot be big down or equal to zero. Therefore, zero zero is not the correct answer to this lie. Therefore, this side should not be the, the side of the solution. Therefore, we say the entire, uh, the other side. So this is the solution. Now, we try to to plot another point. I mean, another lie. Let's try, let's just keep this color. Okay, why plus less than or equal to minus 2 over 7x plus 2. Again, 2. 2 is your um, your y and sf so it's right here. 2 is right here. Now, you have, this is the slope. Minus 2 over 7. That means I go down 2 unit. Go to the right by 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Right here. And now, I should connect uh, to lie together. So I have two sides. One in this side, the other one in this side. So how do I know which side that I should shape my answer? Okay, let's do some test point. Again, we can pick 0, 0 at a test point. So 0 for y, also 0 for x, plus 2. This is 0, times 0 is 0. 2 bigger than 0 which is correct so anything on this side of this line should be the answer let me try a different color to see if we can do that or not okay so anything up this side yes should be the answer because 0 0 give me the two statement that means the region that including 0 0 of this line should be the answer and we can see um, the two inequalities, they have this, the intersection between the red and the blue one, which is this area right here, should be the area of, um, of the, um, the entire solution. Okay, how do I... Okay, so the area of this whole thing here. This is the area of, of the intersection, should be the entire solution. So we should shape the entire region between the intersection of the two inequality. And that should be the answer. Well, that's make it easy for the red color to see. Okay, so that is the answer for um, this region here is the answer for the entire um, the intersections for the two inequalities. Okay, we have a word problem for the next problem here, right here. Let's change that to back to the white one. Right. The tickets to a production um, of a midsummer night stream at the college cost five dollar for general admissions and four dollar with a student ID. If one eighty four people pay to see a performance and eight. Hundred twelve dollar was collected. How many of its type of ticket was sold? That means the question asks you 
how many tickets that uh, were sold at a general admission or how many tickets that were sold as a student ID so they asked you for two things that's why we let two variable x and y so I let x to be the number of the general admissions ticket and I let y to be the number of the student tickets there are two things that they ask you so let x and y to be the two things that they, they ask you for the number of the student tickets so after you name the variable x and y we can then go to the statement and then figure out the two uh, equations anytime you have two variable x and y we need two equations to, to solve for x and y so the first equation we can come up with was that we know that 184 people pay to get inside the performance to see uh, the performance therefore 184 people have 184 tickets that means the total number of tickets x and y must be 184 and I also know that $812 was collected at the end that means if they have X numbers of the chair admission this is $5 for the chair admission that means 5 times the, the number of the X plus the number of the dollar for the student ID is $4 so 4 times Y all together the money must equal to a 12 so this is the system of equation that you are trying to solve for X and Y and we can solve this equation by elimination methods. I can multiply the third equation by minus 4 because I want to make the y to have the same value but opposite side. So minus 4 times x minus 4x, minus 4 times y is minus 4y, minus 4 times 184 that is minus 736 and I keep the second equation and now I add them together the y terms are gone 5x minus 4x is 1x subtract these two I get 76 so there are 76 tickets that was the general admission tickets right. now for the y or the, 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 the student tickets we know that the total number of tickets is 184 therefore once we, we know we know 1, uh, 76 for x we can solve for y by taking 184 subtract x which is 76 or it should be 108 student ID uh, tickets so this problems apply the system of equation to solve for x and y using the elimination methods Okay, let's move on to the next questions. We are asked to find the domain of the function in this problem and write the answer in the set builder notation. Now, this function here is a rational expression because we have the numerator, the denominator here. Now, for any rational expression, the domain should be everything except the point where it makes the denominator to be zero because you cannot divide by zero dividing by zero is undefined therefore I need to figure out what is the value that what is the value that makes the denominator x squared minus one to be zero that's what that means we we solve for x squared minus one to be zero and find what's at the points now adding 1 on both sides I have x squared equal 1 so x plus or equal square root of 1 or plus or minus 1 so the domain should be everything except 
when x is equal to 1 or x is equal to minus 1. So if you write that in the set building notation, it is the open, uh, open brackets. x is the domain belong to all real number such that x is not equal to 1 or x is not equal to minus 1 because these are, are the two conditions that make the denominator x squared minus 1 to be 0 and we don't want that to be 0 because you don't want to divide by 0 which is undefined The next problem is perform the indicated um, operation and write a result in the form of the complex number a plus bi. Now this is a, a rational complex um, expression and in order to to to, um, to write the rational expression to, sim to simplify this just into the a plus bi x we must also multiply by the the complex conjugate. Remember, any rational expression, you want to simplify that, you must multiply by the complex conjugate. And the complex conjugate for this expression is the denominator 3 plus 2i now turn into 3 minus 2i. Remember that the conjugate is it, just the difference between the plus and the minus side. Make sure that I multiply the same expression to the top. Now, this is the difference of the square a squared plus minus b squared equal a minus b multiplied by a plus b a minus b a plus b right here therefore a is 3 in this case 3 squared right minus b squared and b 2i squared and then on the top we can do the foiling so let, let me just revise one more step right here so to make it easier, so minus one, okay, let me pass here. Okay, minus one plus five i multiplied by three minus two i. Now on the bottom we know that three squares nine. Now minus two squares four. I square, I square the complex number is minus one by definition. So minus one. Now let's do the following. Minus 1 times 3 is minus 3. Minus 1 times minus 2i, that is plus 2i. 5 times 3, that is 15i. 5 times minus 2i, that is minus 10i, and i give me i square. Okay, let's simplify that. We know that this is minus 1 times minus 4, that is plus 4. So 9 plus 4, minus 3. 15i plus 2i, that is 17i. i square is minus 1. Minus 1 times minus 10, that is plus 10. Now 10 minus 3, that is plus 7. Plus 17i over 9 plus 3, that is 13. Now you want to rewrite the, the final answer in a plus bi. So we can split the first portion into 7 over 13 and add to 17 over 13 and keep the i. That's why you can see 7 over 13 is a, 17 over 13 is, is b in this form right here. So in, the, in any time that we, you want to simplify the complex rational expression, just multiply by the complex conjugate on the top and the bottom. The next question is to graph the following equation. Now this is the, the, the equation of the form of, of the circle. Remember, for any circle we can have the form of a minus x minus h square plus y minus k square equal r square. h k is the center of the circle and r is the radius. Now let's rewrite this form here. Uh, to to be matching with this form that we, we, we are given right here. So x plus 4, if you want a minus psi, that's why you need to have minus minus 4, because minus minus give you plus 4. So same thing here, you want to have the minus here to be in the, in the form of the circle. Therefore I need another minus 1, because minus minus give me plus 1. 
square. You want a square for the right hand side which is 5 squared, 25. So in, if you rewrite in this form, we know that minus 4 is 8, minus 1 is k. So 8k equal to minus 4. Minus 1, this is the center of the circle. 5 is the radius of the circle. So if I draw the circle, let's plot the center. Minus 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 for x, minus 1 for y. I have the center of the circle. This circle has the radius of 5. So from here, we go 5 to the right, 5 to the left, 5 up and 5 down. So let's go 5 to the right, right here, one more. Okay, let's do the minus right here. Okay, minus right here. So this is 1, so we go 5 unit to the right. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 unit to the left. We plot another point. 5, five unit up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And now we're just connecting the circle together. Right. And the radius should be 5. The next question is solving the equation by completing the square. Okay, so let's try that. Now, in order to complete the square, we need to write uh, the left-hand side to be a perfect square trinomial. Now, we take the middle term, which is 2, right? 2 is the middle term. Okay, 2, two is the middle term. I divide by 2, which is... 1. We always take the middle term divided by 2, which is 1. And then I square 1, which gives me 1. So 1 is the number that I should add to both sides of the equation. x squared plus 2x plus 1 makes sure I add to the right hand side as well. This is the perfect square of x plus 1 before we square as 1. So x plus 1 square equal 4 plus 1 is 5. Using the square root property, x plus 1 equals plus or minus square root of 5. So for x subtract 1 on both sides, I have x equal plus or minus square root of 5 minus 1. So we have two answers, square root of 5 minus 1, and minus square root of 5, and minus 1. So one answer here, one answer here. 25. So the word problem, a plane flies 560 miles in 1.5 hour, traveling with the wind, and then the return drift later against the same wind takes the plane 2 hours. Find the ray of the plane and the speed of the wind, and let's activate the ray of the plane, and let's y to be the wind speed. Now we have two cases, two conditions. With the wind and again the wind. Two cases. Now this is the distance rate time problem. So we should make a table for that. This is the rate time distance. Distance equal rate time time multiply together. Now x is the, the rate the speed of the plane. When you travel with the wind, then the, speed, the wind should add more speed to the plane. That's why the ray or the speed, as, as this case, is the speed of the plane x add to the speed of the wind y. Because the, the wind supports more speed to the plane. Now, when you go against the wind, the ray is different. The ray is equal to the ray of the plane subtract from the wind. I mean subtract to the wind because now the speed of the plane is reduced is reduced uh, reduces by the, the speed of the plane. I mean the speed of the of the plane is reduced by the speed of the wind. Why? The timing I know that it, it took 1.5 75 for the wind and two hours against the wind. 
This term is equal to rate times time. So I multiply the two quantity together. 1.575 multiply rate times time. So x minus y times 2. And now we set up the table. We use the condition right here. The only missing information that we didn't apply here is the plane flies 55, 60 miles. That tells us the distance for each time the, the plane travel uh, its way is 560 miles. The distance is 560 miles. Therefore, the distance of the width of wind x plus y multiplied by 71.75. The distance should be 560. And also, the distance of the other one is the same thing. The plane travel its way is 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 one five sixty. So these are the two equations that you must use to solve for x and y. Now for this one, if you divide both sides by one seventy five, you got x plus y to be three twenty. If you divide by two on both sides, you got x minus y to be three twenty. Two eighty. Sorry, is it two eighty? So 280, right, 280. Now these are the two e equations you are solving for. So we write a system of equations right here. X plus Y equals 320. X minus Y equals 220. We see that they have the opposite side for Y. So we can use the elimination methods to add the two equations to get X and X. 2X, this is cancel out. At these two numbers, you get 600. So divide by 2, you got x to be 300. Once you figure out x to be 300, we can use and we can use any of the two equations right here to solve for y. And y should be 300. Subtract x, which is 300. So 320 subtract 300. That is 20. So the speed of the plane is 300 mile per hour. The speed of the wind is 20 mile per hour. The next problem. We are solving the equation. This is the absolute value equation. So before solving any absolute value equation, we must isolate the absolute value side on one side. So we subtract one on both sides. Subtract one, we got seven. Now for the absolute values, there are two cases. One is the positive. The other one is the negative case. And then we solve for them separately. So adding 2 on both sides, I get 9, divided by 3, I get 3. Plus 2 on both sides, I get minus 5. Divide by 3, I get minus 5 over 3. So the two answer is this one and this one. Number 27. Determine whether the following relation is the function or not in the state region. In order for a, a relation to be a function, it must uh, pass the the vertical line test. So if I put a vertical line test right here, the vertical line cross the 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 graph at more than one point. In this case, two points. Therefore, it fails the vertical line test, and the answer is no. Is it not a function? Number 28, we are trying to find the uh, g of a plus 1 given the function g of x. Now g of a plus 1, this whole, pl uh, this whole placeholder a plus 1 now is the value of x because g of x is this function. Now x now becomes a plus 1. So anywhere you see x, it's now become a plus 1 square minus 3 x now is a plus 1 plus 2 and now we can simplify this by expanding this one out here we know that x plus y square is x square plus 2xy plus y square in this case x is a y is 1 so I can apply that here 2 times a times 1 plus 1 square foiling here 3a minus 3 plus 2. 
simplify this here. Phi a squared minus 2a plus 1 minus 3a minus 3 plus 2, that is minus 1. Now, do the distribution of phi to the inside. You have phi a squared minus 10a plus phi minus 3a minus 1. Combine like term, phi a squared stay the same, minus 10 minus 3 minus 13a, phi subtract 1, that is plus 4. Okay, I think I make, I make a small mistake right here. This is the plus. The plus should be here, not minus. So plus here, you should find times 2a, that is 10a. Okay, so 10a minus 7a should be... 10a minus 3a, that should be plus 7a. So 5a squared plus 7a plus 4. Consider the following graph. Determine f of 3. So f of 3 does mean I ask you for the y value when x is 3. The y function is right here. So y when x is 3, 3 squared minus 3 minus 2. 3 squared is 9, subtract 3, subtract 2. 9 subtract 3 is 6, 6 subtract 2 is 4. The domain is how far you can go on the x-axis. It looks like for any problem, the domain can be anything on the x-axis. Any value of x should be phi. So let's go from minus infinity up to positive infinity. Determine all the value of x make the function of f of x to be 0. We can see it's equal to 0. The function f of x, which is y. So you want to find when on the x, where on the x does make the y to be 0? y to be 0 happens right here and right here. And that happens when x is minus 1 and x is equal to 2. So when x is minus 1 and, and when x is 2, these are the two uh, locations that makes the f of x to be 0. Determine the range. Now, in order to know the range, we need to figure out the value of the, the vertex right here because the range is from here is the lowest point go all the way up right so you need to find the the, the, the y asset I mean the y coordinate of the, the vertex remember the vertex has the formula of minus b over 2a and f of minus b over 2a okay so in this case what is what is B and what is the A? A is 1, B is minus 1, right? A is the coefficient of the square term, which is 1. B is the coefficient of the middle term, which is minus 1. So minus B over 2A, which is minus or minus 1 over 2 times 1, this is 1 over 2. And then this is the x coordinate for the y, which is yield this value, plug into here. 1 half square minus x which is 1 half minus 2 then that should be minus 9 over 4 so this value right here the vertex is 1 half for x minus 9 over 4 so minus 9 over 4 is the lowest point so we go all the way from minus 9 over 4 up to positive infinity therefore the range should be minus 9 over 4 up to positive infinity Okay, that is the range for the graph. Now the next example, we are trying to evaluate the following complex units right here. Anytime that we are talking about the i, we know that's i square. i square. i square is equal to minus one. So somehow you need to use the information right here to simplify this one. Well, I know that the minus sign, I can keep it outside. So just don't touch it for now. The the power of 1001. I know that I can apply the square. Because I know I square is minus 1. Now, I square 
two wood power that give me one thousand and one and that is five hundred because five hundred times two is a thousand so we are still missing one more so I multiply by another i to the one power All right and just keep that minus sign from the outside but for this expression right here I know i square is just minus one to the five hundred don't forget the minus here this is either the first power or just i now minus one is a minus minus to the even power it just become plus one right it's just one and then this is just plus one times i now minus times one is minus one minus one times i is just minus i at the end you should get minus i all right so the last question is the extra critic quest we are given the f of x and g of x we are trying to find the composition function between f and g and then evaluate that when x is equal to 2 so this composite function here means f of g of x but when x is now 2 so f of g of 2 we have the inside and the outside function let's take care of the inside function first g of 2 what is the value of this one so g of 2 we use the function g of x right here g of 2 x now become 2 2 squared 4 plus 5 is 9 g of 2 is 9 so I go back here to the inside function I have f of 9 now using the f function I can figure out that f of 9 is 9 4 times 9 minus 1 4 9 times 4 is 36 minus 1 is 35 and this one we just just find the f of g, uh, the composite function f and g of x in general. So this has become f of g of x. g of x is given right here, which is x squared plus 5. Now f of x squared plus 5, we have the function f of x to be 4x minus 1. Now f of this thing should be equal to this thing times 4, 4 times this thing, minus 1, 4 times this whole quantity, minus 1, because f of x is 4 times x minus 1, so f of this thing is 4 times this thing, minus 1, we just follow this formula right here, so do the distribution right here, 4 times x squared is 4x squared, plus 4 times 5 is 20, and minus 1, simplify that one more time, 4x squared, Keep that the same thing, 20 minus 1, that is plus 19. So that is the final answer. Because they, they don't ask you to evaluate any specific value like the Fourier sample. Therefore, we should have expression in terms of x. In this case, we should have a single value because we have 2 as the value of x. And that is the end of uh, this final review. And I hope this helps um, all of you for the final next week. And good luck. Thanks for watching.